Hello my soccer universe, the fifth round of the Austrian Bundesliga in 23-24 matches up Lusk in a home game with Austria Vienna and after facing the biggest team in Austria in Rapid Vienna in the first round, the city rival in the third round, in the fifth round it doesn't get much easier uh, in the sense that you're facing arguably Austria's second biggest team at least from a uh, status for sure um, I'm not so sure about the fan bases as of late because Austria uh, Wien doesn't draw as many fans as they used to be but that's also part of their story that we will talk about. One thing is for sure that Austria Vienna is the most titled team in Austria. They may not have the, that many championships as Rapid with only 24. However, the Austrian Cup they've won 27 times which far out uh, does Rapid Vienna and so on total they have uh, they have more titles there. They also have twice won the Mitropa Cup in the 30s which is kind of a precursor of um, European competitions uh, in a period that was actually uh, overall star studded but didn't yield any Austrian championships which I think is also very interesting. So I would say we'll uh, look quickly into the team um, in the founding history. They were founded in 1910 when players from the Vienna uh, Cricket and Football Club came together and from uh, the amateur sports club. Uh, they were disgruntled with the old club, came together and founded the Wiener Amateure, so the Vienna Amateurs, which is a very curious name. At the time, they were amateurs. However, if you didn't know, the Austrian Bundesliga was the first continental league, so outside of England and Scotland, that got professionalized. And it was basically only a Vienna team could be professionalized. I repeat that. But with the professionalization of the game, the name amateurs did not fit any anymore and so they got renamed into Austria Vienna and that happened in late 1926. So we have that established there and that name has uh, with a few odd uh, circumstances, you know, uh, <laughs> fusions with other teams, the name has stood ever since or even sponsoring reason have changed the name uh, at times. As with the eternal rivals, Rapid Austria Vienna has a similar strong connection uh, to the Austrian hist footballing history, uh, especially many of the players that Austria Vienna had are considered among the very best that ever graced the Austrian national team. And the most standout ones of these are of course Matthias Schindler, who was kind of the star of the Austrian wonder team of the early 30s. And as of late, Herbert Prohaska, I would say, is also another big hitter, but there have been many, many more. Uh, I think another one that I would like to mention is Ernst Otzwerk uh, from the 50s, uh, who was also a really, really good um, player. Now, the, and I think he was the captain of the 1954 Austrian national team. So, you know, uh, real, real big hitters there. In stark contrast to Rapid Vienna, Austria Vienna was always a more bourgeois club. They were originated in uh, the district of Hietzing, which is in the west of Vienna, around Kassel and Brunswick, a very well-to-do district. Uh, and that reflects that. Also, their playing style. Austria Vienna was always famous for the beautiful way of playing the game. So, uh, while Rapid Vienna wanted to have the fight, 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 Austria Vienna were always about, we want to have, we see, we want to see the beautiful game. And this is the base tension of the Vienna Derby, but I think I need to do a separate video on that Vienna Derby as it is the biggest club game in Austria and one of the oldest rivalries in all of Europe. Um, as I already said, the fan base of uh, Austria Vienna is uh, more of the bourgeois side and you see that many top ranking officials within, Austria, uh, within Vienna are typically more leaning towards Austria Vienna than they do Rapid Vienna, unless of course you're from the Socialist Party, then Rapid Vienna is your um, team in a way. Uh, but from that point of view, you also can see that Austria Vienna were always going to have a f fewer fans than Rapid Vienna. However, they had more prominent fans. You know, if you go to the theater scene or, you know, the culture scene, if they are fans, they tend more to the purple side. 
of Vienna. Um, however, I have the feeling that this is like the overall uh, uh, feeling, but if I look at the hardcore fans, I don't see this that much any anymore. I don't think there's that many distinguishing features. Anyway, we don't have really a class system in Austrian uh, society anymore. So that one is, you know, that fans are a little bit more level in that sense. Um, what's even more curious is that over their history, Austria Vienna never really had a solid home base. Yes, they were based in the west of Vienna, uh, but they had to sell the stadium um, because of financial trouble. And then they went on a decades long search for a new home or they played literally every in every stadium in Vienna, a total of 13. Uh, most notably, they shared the former Weststadion for a while with Rapid Vienna that became then the home base for Rapid Vienna and where Rapid Vienna is still uh, playing. They uh, called the um, Austrian National Stadium what was back then called the Prater Stadium. Uh, they are home for most of the game. They all also played in the Hohe Warte, which is now home of First Vienna Football Club, the oldest club in Austria. They played literally everywhere and this was part of their uh, failing identity. They even had a period where they played two seasons in one uh, um, stadium, then two seasons in the next and so on to kind of figure out where is our home. In the end, they settled in the south, south of Vienna uh, for the, um, on the ground of the Vienna Football Federation in the 10th district of Vienna, which quite ironically, is the workers' district, or the workers' district of Vienna. Um, it's a little bit outside. It was not as easy, def definitely not as easy to reach as Rapid Vienna, the stadium, although meanwhile there is a um, subway stop there, so that is all good. And they redeveloped that ground over the years, and it is now a very modern stadium. But this is now their home base. But that started being their home base, I would say, right around the late 80s, early 90s. So from the 20s to, let's say, the 80s, that was a period of searching their home. And this is a huge part of the Austria Vienna identity. And it's also uh, the irony. As I said, is that Austria Vienna is their stadium is located in a classic workers district, whereas Rapid Vienna, their stadium is located in actually a very posh district overall. So take for it what it was. That's the irony of soccer in Vienna. A look over uh, the history of Austria Vienna uh, will reveal that Austria Vienna have actually a lot of championships, but unlike Rapid Vienna, who got most of their in the earlier uh, years of their existence, Austria Vienna is a little bit more recent. Uh, I don't want to say now, I mean, it's not super, super recent because for the last 10 years, uh, Red Bull Salzburg have won all those titles. However, the last team that won the title was not called uh, Red Bull Salzburg, was of course Austria Vienna in 12. 13 but uh they had early success periods in the 20s then in the 30s when they had all these wonder team stars they actually only wanted the uh, mitropa cup um they also have uh then the period because they were seen as a jewish team under the nazis uh that definitely hurt uh, their successes but after uh, uh war they had a really successful period in the late 40s, early 50s. So that kind of laid the groundwork and that this is the time where you, for, for instance, an Ernst Otzweck was playing. Uh, it came up again then in the early 60s, uh, the next period, period. Um, and then it really kicked into the next level in the late 70s and in the 80s to the early 90s, where they were really de uh, de the team, uh, winning uh, national titles in 76, 78, 79, 80, 81, 84, 85, 86, and then 91, 92, 93, which is 11 titles in that period alone. And uh, they did that in style. Uh, they also won the Austrian Indoor Championship, which was, is one uh, part of itself that Austria always excelled because they were known for the beautiful play. Uh, many times as well, but this was really a period of sustained success. They were also the first team 
after the war to reach a European final, uh, which was then lost to Anderlecht uh, 4-0. Uh, they reached in the semi-final of the European Cup uh, the year after in 79, I think losing out to Malmö, who then lost to uh, Forest. Um, and yeah, and I think they also reached a Cup Winner Cup semi-final where they were, they were eliminated by uh, Real Madrid. So that was really, I, I would say, the period where Austria Vienna was the most successful and it also coincided with the founding of the new Bundesliga. So uh, simply by Bundesliga titles over the last 50 years, it's Austria Vienna, Austria Vienna, Austria Vienna. They were the big team. Uh, and with their attractive style of play, they actually got a few, many fans out there. I even remember that in Linz in the early 90s, it was always that Austria Vienna had like a friendly game in Linz. I remember one against Manchester United, um, you know, showing the status that this was the team to beat. Of course, it was also the time uh, that I got into the game and as the team to beat, I never really liked them all that much as a Lusk fan, but you know, that's a different side of the story. Uh, Towards the end of this successful period, uh, the one where then Herbert Prohaska went from player to become a coach and was really successful there as well, winning, as I said, three in a row. Uh, among those was probably the tightest final day where uh, three teams were so close to two together and there was a head-to-head -head between Salzburg and Austria Wien at the uh, Prater Stadion, as it was still called then. Uh, so that was an exciting time. Uh, they also then won once the Austrian Cup, but then the financial troubles began to hit. Uh, and it went down relatively quickly. That Austria Vienna went from this super team to the late 90s, they were more a mid table team. Then came the saving grace, you thought, with Frank Stronach, uh, a can Austrian Canadian uh, billionaire with his Magna Corporation who pumped in the money. They got triple the budget of, the, uh, of, of most of the other Austrian teams who were legendarily cash strapped at the time. That's why you find sponsors all over Austrian shirts, because, you know, wherever the cash comes, we take it. Uh, and Austria Vienna even at the time was called first uh, Austria Memphis after the cigarette brand, which for me, Memphis is either in a, a city in Egypt or in the United States. So uh, kind of a little bit belying their roots. And then Austria Wagner Memphis and then Austria Magna. Um, Curiously enough, while there was investment done into the stadium, building the first new stand there, um, the success was actually not coming. Uh, they, it yielded only uh, two Austrian championships in 2003 and 2006, which was really, really, really weird. And this was uh, just before Red Bull came in. So, and there were also, also some, uh, quite some uh, coaches with rep reputation like Christoph Daum and Joachim Löw didn't really work all that way. Stronach then actually, um, when Red Bull came, he decided um, it's not he doesn't is not that interesting one wanted to more than invest into the youth and sent Austria again in a little bit of a tailspin there. <music> And that tailspin is what actually um, forced an Austria Vienna to kind of, you know, let's redevelop the stadium, let's make this into a modern European uh, smaller or mid-sized stadium, you know, uh, around 20,000. They did that, invested heavily, uh, especially on the back of that last Austrian championship. And you really thought Austria Vienna is a team that has a plan. However, uh, the latest when Corona hit, they had they outdid themselves and come into big financial trouble. And yeah, uh, they have not twice made it in there. Currently, they um, under a new ownership, if you like, with former Lusk Vice President Jürgen Werner at the helm of it. Given how he reinvented Lusk, I think Austria Vienna over the time will actually become they have a concept now. I think they could become a top team in Austria relatively soon again if they follow that style. I always feel that Austria Vienna, while still very much relying on their former greats, 
they finally come around to formulate a plan of how you want to go forward unlike uh, Rapid, which is only legend worship. And so I actually have a little bit more positive overall outlook on us also when it comes to maybe winning some silverware. <music> Lastly, I want to also talk about the rivalry with Lusk, which uh, is again like Rapid Vienna. Austria Vienna does not care about Lusk all that much. Their main rival is, of course, Rapid Vienna, and the way that Lusk has been over the last few years, uh, it, you know, there was not much rivalry because Lusk didn't play much in the Bundesliga. It's only very recent that Lusk is establishing themselves as one of the top teams in Austria uh, again. Um, the fan bases for both teams are very, you know, the classic fan bases are very similar, more on the uh, bourgeois side. And so there was always kind of, at least between the clubs, there was always a relatively good relationship, which was uh, also reflected in there have been many player exchanges between those two teams, but mostly uh, to the, um, you know, disadvantage of Lusk because Austria Vienna kind of got the good Lusk players. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is of course Helmut Kögelberger, uh, the last player of the Sands, century, who had a very successful period also in Vienna at Austria Vienna. Uh, but yeah, rivalry overall, I have to say, Lask is doing relatively well against Austria Vienna. Uh, I, it, it's a team, it, it's a much closer rival. It's even to the point where Club Ilo says that uh, Austria Vienna is doing not so well against Lask. So there you go. For me, wins against Austria Vienna are always cool, but they're not as satisfying as Rapid Vienna because simply Austria Vienna doesn't bring as many fans. Um, of course, I also have slightly negative connotation with Austria Vienna because that's the only time then when I was uh, visiting away games that I was subjected to some sort of minor violence being, uh, you know, coming from the away me meeting fans and being uh, pushed into a fence. Uh, that's maybe where there's some antithropy from my side comes. But you know, uh, as being outside from Vienna, both of the big Vienna teams, let's say, it, are not that popular. Although, as I've said multiple times, I totally validate their contribution to the big game and their importance to the Austrian game overall. <laughs> Now, uh, this video I'm shooting uh, well ahead of uh, that game because I will be on vacation during the game, so I don't get the latest results. However, both teams had so-and-so starts to, to the league with some promising signs for us to all, 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 all also to, to a relatively good European showing. I think this will be a tight match. Overall, I think the teams at this moment in time, especially with last group building, are a, meet on a much more level terms than they did in the last season. So yeah, those are my few cents on Austria Vienna. Um, the main storylines there. Let, let me know if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you did, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you about more about Austrian soccer very soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.